Amen. As we call up our own bishop and pastor, Clifford L. Sessom. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise God. We want to thank and welcome once again, amen, our own Amelia Tucker. Amen. We acknowledge her. We're going to acknowledge her again. We want to tell Sister Kim, thank you, God bless you for bringing her. Amen. amen. Inviting her. Amen. Glory to God. Before we do any other thing, we have one correction. We please don't show up on Thursdays. Don't do that. Amen. We On Thursdays, what we do, we're real, really busy. Amen. We're loaded down with a lot of food, and we're distributing to drip, just distributing the food primarily to ministries. Amen. We have, in other words, we're in overflow. We have more than what we can use, and so we have other ministries that go out in the streets and give to homeless people, and then some people that we give to, they give to other ministries also. So it's it's getting broken up. Amen. And so we don't want you showing up on Thursdays. You will not miss out. What we do is we bring it here for you. So after church on Sundays, we open up the freezer and the refrigerator for you to receive what you need. And if you have a neighbor you want to give something, if we have that amount, we allow you to get enough for your neighbors. Amen. And your friends or someone else you know that needs. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Let's acknowledge our own first lady. She's in the video booth. Come on out of there, Renee. Come on out of there. Let them see you. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's my wife, amen, for 34 years. Amen. And I am privileged, amen, to be married to her. Praise the Lord. Amen. And let's acknowledge, amen, is Mother Maria in the house. God bless you. Amen. Usually I go to Mother Dixon first, but Mother Maria, the enemy been trying to attack her health, amen, and we thank God that she's here. Amen. And she's well. Amen. God bless you. Let's acknowledge our own Mother Dixon. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now give it up for your neighbor now. Acknowledge your neighbor in the Lord. Praise God. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm talking about for your neighbor. If I called your name out, you'd do better than that. The Bible says to love your neighbor as yourself now. Amen. 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 And we do have children today. Amen. We want to get ready to dismiss them to class. But before we can have your seats, I'll have you stand up in a second. Amen. Glory to God. We did uh, what we do when individuals join our church and they say they want to be part of this ministry. Well, to inform them as to what we believe. Amen. Glory to God. What we have is called new members class. The new members class consists of four lessons, amen. It normally takes a month, amen, but due to 4th of July and me oversleeping, amen, it took about, amen, two months, but we made it through. And so we want to acknowledge our two newest, amen, members, amen, who have successfully completed what we call our Fresh Start class, amen. We want to acknowledge our own sister, Ty Holloway. We would ask her to come up, amen. And our own sister, Artisha Turner. Amen. We'd ask her to come up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. That's for you. Amen. And that's for you. Amen. So the camera's on you, so turn around and let the camera see you. Amen. God, open it up. Y'all know how to do it. Act like you got a degree. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, that class serves a dual purpose. We're going to dismiss in a second. It, does, it serves a dual purpose. It's necessary. The Bible says that the, the, the leaders should know the state of their flock. Amen. I know it pertains to uh, uh, when it comes to finances also, but also when you're a pastor. You need to know who joined the church. You need to know where, what depth they are, how mature they are in Christ. And it gives us an opportunity, amen, glory to God, to interface with one another. And we, we talk about the Bible. We talk about the lesson. And sometimes we go into current events. Sometimes we get off track. Y'all know Pastor says, we go down a rabbit hole, and then we have to find ourselves back out. Sometimes I get started on a conversation and wonder, how did I get there? Amen. But it's all good. They get to know my heart. Amen. Glory to God. And I get to know theirs. Let's give it up for them one more time. 
Amen. Now we want all the children to stand to their feet. Praise the Lord. The children that want to go to, amen, the children's church. Amen. God bless you. Amen. You're under the direction, amen, of sister of our own deaconess. Amen. Williams. Amen. Praise the Lord. We want to ask somebody to stay to be in the audio room for the camera so we can keep an eye on them. Amen. Just for security purposes. Praise the Lord. And I like to say stuff like this here over the air just in case somebody feel like getting stupid. Amen, somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, we get that humidity back out of here. Amen, somebody. I woke up this morning and the air conditioner had been turned off. It was humid. My goodness. Praise the Lord. I want to... There's several things that's going on around the world that's disturbing to me, but uh, I don't like to delve too deeply into politics. Amen. But certain things need to be, we need to talk about it to a degree, to a, just to a degree. Where's my ring at? Praise God. Hallelujah. Take it off when I uh, play my guitar. The Bible, uh, let's turn to John chapter 15, first of all. John chapter 15. And I'll pray that it'll help me, amen, get to where I need to be. How you doing, little Jose Luis? You looking at me like you didn't say nothing to me today. I got you. <laughs> What's up, Brother Chris? Are you wearing contact? Can you see me? You can't see me? <laughs> If you need, you can more than welcome to sit closer. Okay, you good? He said, I don't need to see, I need to hear. <laughs> Amen, praise the Lord. Amen. Look at verse 5 of John chapter 15. I just want to start there as for my introduction. I'm going to ask you to keep your Bibles with you and available because we're going to turn to certain scriptures. John chapter 15. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Verse 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. And is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you praise. We honor you. We thank you for your word. Heavenly Father, I'm asking you in Jesus' name to help me to teach and preach your word today. I ask for your grace. I receive your grace. I ask for your mercy. I receive your mercy. I ask for your anointing. I believe I receive your anointing to teach and to preach your word. Father, I bless those that have ear, that they these that will listen, that they would have ears to hear what your spirit is saying today. Let them be doers of the word and not merely hearers. I rebuke the devil on every hand. I come against every foe to faith. You are under my feet in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you for good success in this endeavor. And those that agree, put their hands together and say amen. Come on, somebody. Come on and praise the Lord. I said, come on and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to preach a message. Well, let me start this way. It's disturbing as to what I see happening in the United States and the pressures that the United States are placing on other countries to participate 
in their sinful activities. It's disturbing to me to see in the state of Florida that history is being erased once again and replaced with a whitewashed version of the truth. In the many countries in Africa that have been receiving help or aid from the United States. In the, under the heading of humanitarian assistance. These countries are finding themselves under pressure and under threat of not receiving that humanitarian aid unless they accept the LGBTQ agenda. But we thank God that there's some presidents over there. There's some leaders over there that though their countries may be poor and though they may be lacking many things that we, that are, come on, luxuries for us. They still stick to the word of God. They still stick to the Bible. Uganda president came out and says we will not. He called it a deviant behavior. He said we're not going to accept homosexuality as anything normal. The United States threatened them. We're going to take the money from you. They don't care. They're telling you we stick to the Bible. Kenya, Nigeria, Congo, a lot of them are standing up for the word of God. I came to preach today. I came to preach today. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus' name. And I don't care who get mad. Come on, somebody, because I live for Jesus. When judgment day come, I'm going to have to answer to him and not to you. Come on, somebody. I'm going to preach this thing. The Bible says what you hear in your ear. You preach on the rooftops. We're going to take this thing to a whole nother level today. Somebody give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus name. I say this time out. It's time out for folk telling us what the truth is when we know the truth. Y'all don't like me preaching like this here. Don't whitewash sin don't whitewash sin now, now now understand something i'm not preaching this and as, as an attack against anybody's race that ain't what's happening no 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 i'm using the word whitewash i define it this way the dictionary defines it this way to whitewash something means anything as deceptive words deceptive actions used to cover up or to gloss over faults to gloss over errors to gloss over wrongdoings or to absolve a wrongdoer from blame don't whitewash sin the Bible makes it clear that any person who was once saved and is now living in any kind of habitual sin is on their way to hell. Uh-oh. I went there, didn't I? They said, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. The days of greasy grace is out. Come on, somebody. See, the deal is, we act like Jesus bled. And, no, I cannot work it this way. We act like God incarnated himself in human flesh, stepped out of eternity, and then this limited thing. We know it's time to sit up there, to die, to bleed, so that you can have everything your way. Now, you can say lie on that for a minute. You think about that for a minute. The devil is a liar. 
God's word says, if any man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. Men gather them, they are cast into fire. And they burned. Now you, do you try to tiptoe your way around that. Woo, glory. You got to understand. God's word sets forth conditions. Conditions. And these conditions are non-negotiable. Oftentimes we see promises and we claim the promises. But the promises, to, in order to receive the promises, my God, there is a, a non-negotiable specific performance that's attached to the promise. In other words, there is an if attached to the promise. They don't like me preaching this here. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's too much slipping and sliding going on. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm a, oh, this, was good. this one right here is going to change your life today. I'm telling you, this, this word today is going to change your life because it's the truth. It's, see, some people, we, we, we get our favorite preachers because they don't never step on our big toe. They don't never get up in our face. They don't get in our grill. There's no pressure placed on us to do anything. Bless, 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 bless. And Pastor says I believe in blessing. You think he don't? But also, I believe, glory to God, that we got to live right. We got to live holy. Come on, somebody. Are you in 1 Corinthians 10? Let, let, let's go there. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant. I know it says ignorant, but y'all know where I'm at with this. I don't want you to be ignorant. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Paul said, I got to inform y'all about something. Come on, somebody. Let me remind you about something. I don't want you to forget something. That's what he's saying. And all were baptized unto Moses. And in the cloud and in the sea. And all did eat the same spiritual meat. What is he talking about spiritual meat? He was saying they were supernaturally fed. Yes, yes. Come on somebody. He, he says and all of them did drink the same spiritual drink. They got water formed from a rock. It was supernatural. Come on somebody. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. Yes, yes, yes. Now, now I know they don't that make you happy. But look at verse 5. But with many of them. Somebody say many. many. With somebody say many. many. With many of them, God was not pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. They didn't make it into the promised land. Now these things were our. Somebody say our. Not the 60 minutes. Come on. Not the 360 seconds. It's not talking about H-O-U-R. It's O-U-R. Our. These, now these things were our examples. To the intent that we. Somebody say we. That we should not lust after evil things. As they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters. As were some of them. As it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink. And rose up to play. It's talking about glory to God. The golden calf. Neither let us commit fornication. As some of them committed. And fell in one day. Three and twenty thousand. Twenty three thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ. As some of them also tempted and were destroyed 
of serpents. Neither murmur ye. I started to camp out right here. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. It's too much back talking. It's too much whispering. It's too much complaining. Come on somebody. Now all, listen, verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them for for examples. Yes. It says in samples, but that the same thing as an example. Yes. And they were written for our what? Admonition. Yes. For our admonition. For our admonition. What's it mean by it? For our instruction. Yes. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. What's it talking about the ends of the world? It's saying we're in the last days. Yes. He says things are about to wind up. He, he's saying, just, I feel it. He's saying just like they were about to enter into the promised land, we about to enter into the promised heaven. Yeah. Mm. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth. Take heed lest he fall. Don't get overconfident. Don't get self-confident. Don't think you sing so good. Don't think you preach so good. Don't think you pray so good. Don't think you lay hands so good. Don't think you dress so good. Don't think your church so big so good. Don't think your money so good. Don't think, come on somebody. Let any man think he stand to take heed lest he fall. Fall. The point is, what, what is popular with man ain't necessarily popular with God. Somebody might ask me the question, I, I'm not done yet. Somebody might ask a question, how could that governor down there in Florida say such things that he knows is a lie? He trying to be the president. He's playing, he's playing politics. Politics is based on pop, the populace. Or he's go, what he's doing, he's addressing the masses. He knows that certain people are in the minority when it comes to numbers. You hear what I'm saying? So he's addressing the greater number. Because he knows the odds are out of the greater number if he can just get them to believe a certain Y'all ain't hearing me. He can get their vote. He ain't studying y'all people that don't never go to vote. You hear what I'm saying? He's trying to soothe their conscience of the sin that was done in this country to a, a, a people. And it's still being done around this world. We espouse ourselves to be a Christian nation. But the Bible says if you are, the Bible says you know you, they're my disciples by the love they have one to another. How can I put up a barrier of, of, of barbed wire, come on somebody, down the Rio Grande River to prevent folks who's trying to get a better life from, not, come on somebody, how can I push people back in the water, come on somebody, how can I separate parents from their children, come on somebody, and talk about I got the love of Jesus in me. How can I put my attention way across the Atlantic Ocean, way across the Pacific Ocean, when we got somebody right at our doorstep that need all kind of help? Y'all don't want me preaching like this here. Y'all don't want me preaching like this. Don't whitewash sin. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to Jesus' name. Glory to Jesus' name. When we, well, we're just because, listen, listen, God gave the children of Israel promises. But, but just because the Lord gave promises does not mean that everybody is going to possess those promises. See, the deal is obedience is required. Obedience to God's word. That's what John meant when it says, if ye abide in me. When 
to abide means play by the rules. Requires obedience to God's word. What 1 Corinthians chapter 10 shows us is uh, it speaks of, ten, of five sins that kept Israel out of the promised land. Five sins. Now I'm trying to move fast, y'all. That promised land was a land of blessing. Now since that was done for our example, it shows us that there's five sins that keep us from experiencing God's blessings. And they also will keep you out of heaven. Don't get mad at me. I, I know some of y'all take a, got that Calvinistic type of belief system going on that once you get saved, it's all good. You got to live something. I'm going I'm to I'm deal with this. I'm going to deal with this. See, 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 see. The world seeks to romance sin. But if God says it's a sin, that's what it is. Trying to tone down the terms. <laughs> Don't change nothing. See, just like they were on their way to the promised land, we on our way to judgment day. Come on, somebody. If you don't believe we on our way to judgment day, you blind in one eye and can't see out the other one. So there's five sins that was listed here. I told you to keep your Bibles ready. Don't put your Bible up. We're going to walk this thing. Because see, some folks just think, oh, I, I received Jesus as my Savior 20 years ago, and you're doing some of everything. We're going we gonna to clean you up today. Amen. Is that all right? Yes. See, see, the word will clean you. Yes, Come on, somebody. I said the word will clean you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some of our theology need to be cleaned. Yes, Come on, some. Yesterday, I bought, we've been frying fish and stuff like that there. My wife said, man, this kitchen all kind of greasy. Dion moved in. Me and my, not, my wife, before he got there, we was baking and roasting some of everything. That brother come in the house, he frying chicken. He frying fish. Come, he, He's a fryer. You know what I'm saying? He'll take potatoes and skin them bad boys, chop them up. He'll fr breakfast. What? I told you about that breakfast he made for me one day. I mean, brother had a six-course breakfast. She said, grease all on the microwave, grease on the wall, grease over here, grease. <laughs> so, you know, with all that grease, I bought me one of these pots, things that you can pour the grease in. It's got a filter so you can save that bacon grease. He said, we shouldn't be eating it. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. I don't even know how I got there. How, what I'm talking about this for? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We got to understand. Amen. Judgment day is on the way. I don't know how I got to that grease spot. See how I told you I go down a rabbit hole and take it. Where that come from? Maybe I'll catch up to it later on and say, okay, that's why I said that. Amen. Glory to Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So that the five sins was lust, idolatry, fornication, tempting Christ, and murmuring. Yes. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. See, we tend to try to dumb things down. We try to whitewash sin. The world tries to whitewash sin. They're trying to whitewash sin. They're trying to put it on your children. Amen. They want to they wanna call what, we, what should be called adultery. They're trying to call it an affair. And Jesus just had an affair with such a stuff. No, it's straight up adultery. See, see, when you call it what God call it, the whole, the, the, see, God chose those words. And so the, by the Holy Spirit, there's a conviction. <laughs> when you call it what it is, make you not feel comfortable. <laughs> Laying up there like that. It's adultery. It's not premarital sex. It's fornication it's not homosexuality it's sodomy y'all yes. yes. mm -hmm. yes. catch that yes. it's sodomy yes. it's not an obsession it's idolatry uh -huh. those of you that got an obsession with making money an obsession an obsession work so much you ain't got no time for working God until you'll see it's an obsession 
It's idolatry. I remember years ago, believe it or not, when I was uh, in my early 20s, I used to watch, what was that, General Hospital. No, it was the young and the restless. Ooh, I used to keep up with Quartermain them. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. I sit there and roll me a joint. Oh, yeah. What quarter? What did Victoria do? Needed a job. I'm gonna see, but you know, can't 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 go look at look, look for a job till after it go off. And by the time I got out the house to go get a job, I didn't drink six four beers. So I'm in front of an, a prospective employer. Saying, yeah, I, I'm qualified, and all this beer smell. Coming up in the place reeking. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. It's not an obsession. It's idolatry. You glue, you more glued to the TV than you is to the word of God. Help me, Jesus. If it's hitting you, say, help me, Jesus. It's not fibbing. They don't even say fibbing no more. They say, I misspoke. I misspoke. No, straight up, you straight lie. You straight lie. And then there's abortion. It's straight up murder. It is. So we got to stop whitewashing sin. We got to repent. Listen. Listen. I know some of y'all. I thought you were going to talk more about what they're doing on in Florida. No, I came to preach the gospel. Come on, somebody. I came to preach the gospel. You, you know what I'm saying? So you don't fall into the same hole. They didn't, they didn't fall and found themselves in. Amen. 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 Glory to God. See, 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 whatever it takes when an individual chooses to get real with God, they will cut themselves off from anything and anybody who causes them to sin. Go to Mark. Go to Mark. Go to Mark. Come on. Turn to the book of Mark. Matthew, Mark, chapter 9. I told you to keep your Bible. Some of y'all, obedience. Or use your phone. Mark, chapter 9. Glory to Jesus' name. Verse 43. Uh, Mark 9, 43. Mm, mm, mm. Those who choose to get real with God, they, were, they will sever. I know sever is not a word we use all the time, but y'all understand what I mean? Cut off. Straight up cut off. Some of y'all need to cut some folks off. Come on, somebody. Verse 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into where? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Somebody say, uh oh. He's going there. Mm hmm. To go into hell. And look, and, 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 and it, it takes it to another level, too. Into hell. Comma. Somebody say, comma. Into the fire that never shall be quenched. To let you know, hell ain't a good place. No, now, I know it's hot here and humid here in Marino, I mean Marino Valley, and here in Riverside, and in this Inland Empire. But you still maintain it. <laughs> See, we can quench this thing. We can come inside these doors, turn fans on, put the air conditioner down to 70, it's just to chill out, come on, be nice and cool. But this said in hell that the fire shall never be quenched. Verse 44, where their worm died. Now, whatever's eating at you, it's going to keep on eating at you. And the fire, come on. It, 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 see, this is what preachers don't preach about. The fire. It says, and the fire is not quenched. They don't, they don't like, see, this will motivate your behind to stop your sinning. And 
if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt or limping into life than having two feet to be cast where? Into hell. Describes hell. Into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Mm, glory, I feel it. Yeah, somebody said, oh, somebody repented already. Oh, God help me. Uh -huh, I heard you. Verse 47. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it straight up out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire where their worm dieth not. And the fire is not quenched. My God. It seems like this word worm is a euphemism for, for, for the discomfort, the agony, the pain. Yes, yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Don't go away. Uh -huh. That's what it's talking about. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. For everyone shall be salted with fire. And every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good. But if the salt have lost his saltiness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourself. And have peace one with another. What is Jesus talking about? He didn't say it cut some stuff off, y'all. Come on, somebody. But what's he talking about? I'm not talking about what your favorite preacher said. I'm talking about what did Jesus say. I'm talking about what did the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world say. Come on somebody. I'm asking you what did the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What did he say? Come on somebody. Do you, he said that you got to cut some stuff off. See, Jesus is referring to something. He's referring to self-discipline. Self-discipline. He's saying fire purifies and salt preserves from corruption. He's saying you got to work on your stuff. You got to work on your stuff. Hey, I feel him. He is made to somewhat Mark 9, 43 through 50. It's saying, it's saying it's better to experience the present pain of self-denial than future and eternal torment. But you know, it's hard for me to be by myself. Come on, somebody. It's better to be by yourself now than be with a whole bunch of people Burning up in hell. Somebody give God some praise. Hey, shake on the bow shot. Hando lo bow shakanda. Ishele meko to bow siye. Hallelujah. Hando bow sha. Hallelujah. Let's go somewhere else. Let's go to Matthew. Ah, yeah. No, no more shaka. Father, I pray that well, as loud as I'm preaching, that it uh, hit them straight inside their heart, and they just determined to change. Come on, somebody. Glory to Jesus. Sometimes we preach an easy gospel. I preached a couple of months ago. This is not the gospel of getting. So somehow we think the most stuff we get, sometimes that somehow that gives that's proving the approval of God because we got all this stuff. Well, 500 some years ago, a whole bunch of folk went and got some people and took some people across an ocean so that they can get some stuff. Do you believe God approves of that stuff that they got the way they got it? Y'all don't like me preaching like this here. Same as you. Stealing. Will a man rob God? Stealing? No, it's not stealing. It's robbing. 
Robbing is different from stealing. When I rob you, I do damage to you. I produce a weapon, that's robbery. That that might come on somebody that hits you in your and psychologically affects you negatively. It puts a fear in you. If you're a storekeeper, somebody come up in there and pull a gun on you. Now you scared. Now the way you run your business, you lock the door and make them look. You, you looking close because you've been traumatized. God, you come on, somebody. Robbery is different from stealing. Stealing, I could pickpocket you. Yeah, you missing your stuff, but I didn't traumatize you. Will a man rob God? In other words, you are doing a certain damage yes. to me. Yes. Are y'all with me? Yes, we what did I tell you to go to? Yes. Chapter what? Seven. I wanted y'all to go back to First Corinthians chapter 10, but I left that alone. I said, no, nah, somebody can't hang. This is it's getting too hot. Somebody ready to jump up and repent. I, let me finish my sermon first. Hallelujah. See, you preach like, preach like this here. Folks will repent on YouTube. They'll repent on Facebook. I said because there's too many preachers. Got thousands. They got mega churches. And because they're because what they're doing, they petting people. They making you feel good about your sinful self. Preachers aren't supposed to preach the way you preach. Have you ever heard Jesus preach? You're gonna listen to Jesus preach some more. I'm gonna be I'm gonna keep you in the red today. <laughs> I'm going to keep you in the red so you can hear Jesus preach. Come on, somebody. Won't somebody give him praise for a minute? Come on and praise him. Hallelujah. We're going to hear Jesus preach today. We're going to hear Jesus preach. Verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Oh, he's in trouble now. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many be there that with many there be which go in thereat. Pause for a minute. Yes. Come on, Pastor. Don't whitewash sin. Amen. If it's sin, it's sin. Don't bring psychology. Into the church. It's not a problem. It's sin. And the only solution to sin. Is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. It's not do this and do that. The do is receive him as your savior. Hey, most shot. Because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way. Which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Where's my notes at? Hando boka shanda, yelamaya. Hando boka shanda What Jesus is teaching? He's talking about there's two ways. Come on, I told y'all keep your Bibles ready. Two ways. He said one way is heaven. And the other way is hell. The broad way is the easy way. Sometimes when I invite people to receive Jesus, I run out of time. And it feels, I feel something in my gut. I say, God, I just wish I could just spend an hour telling these people, you just can't just say what I just said. It takes a little bit more than that. That's why I try to tell them that now you, what you got to do next, you got to get yourself up into a Bible-believing church. And the truth is, you may think that every church believed the Bible. I got news for you. All of them don't believe the Bible. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because if all of them believe the Bible, all of them would tell you there's a way to heaven and there's a way to hell. Yeah, 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 yeah. They would tell you that the, that the children of Israel was God's covenant people. They had certain privileges. But the Bible tells us that they did not get into the promised land. That's right. Even though it was a promise to them. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Their lifestyle uh -huh. kept them out. Yeah. Yeah. My God, help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. I would have a problem with my wife. 
if she says she loves me but won't never come home. Things that make you go, hmm. I would have a problem with my wife if when I ask her she know what I like to eat, she make the total opposite. Now, I understand very once why we make a mistake. Put a little bit more hot sauce and stuff that we need to put in there. But I'm talking about, y'all know what I'm talking about? Put just putting it straight nasty stuff, throwing my stuff together any old kind of way. Yes. I'd have a problem. Wouldn't you have a problem? Oh, yes. You think the Lord don't got a problem when we say, well, I want to go to church. I, you know, I really want to go to church, but. I, I, I know you want to talk to me today, Lord. Lord, I, 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 Lord, Lord, I know you want to talk to me. Thank God for the small neighborhood church. Because we ain't got to worry about losing people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all ain't hearing me. We ain't got to. That, that is the least of our worries. <laughs> Amen. You know the, what the church, the, the preacher in the small church, what he worried about? Making sure he tell it like it is so when he get the glory, it be all good. <laughs> uh huh. What? The, I don't understand you. Keep. Let's keep reading. But we are false prophets. But so you got to watch. I told the, our, our uh, two uh, 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 successful candidates for joining our church, Sister T uh, Artisha and Sister Ty. I told them, I said, you got to watch who you listen to on YouTube and on Facebook. Because they, what they say, get in your spirit. Come on, somebody. It starts. It starts framing your belief system. You said, well, you know, Pastor Sutton, he up there, he got cut jeans on. And they tight as the day is long. If he been over there, bust. Such and such was out there doing the jiggy. I mean, was getting jiggy with you. Oh, never mind. That's what I'm saying. Lord, help. See, because they'll do stuff like that. And because they do it, that means, come on. See, the Bible says the teachers and the leaders are going to re re receive the greater condemnation. Because really the definition of a leader means somebody's following you. Somebody's mimicking your behavior. Somebody say, help us, Jesus. But we're false prophets. You know why I like this kind of preaching. You know why? You ain't even got to work too hard. All you got to do is holler and say what Jesus said. <laughs> hey! Ha, shot boko. Glory to God. I said, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. But where false prophets? He said, you said it three times, Pastor. I'm just, hey, that's a verily, verily I say unto thee. But where false prophets? Which come to you in sheep's clothing. So you think, what, clothes don't make no difference. Oh, yeah, it, it, we, he said sheep's clothing. We're supposed to be reverend. Y'all don't hear me preaching. We're supposed to be reverend. We're supposed to carry ourselves in a respectable manner. Yeah. I don't care what they say. What? What the? What the? Y'all, y'all get me? Yeah. Jesus gave a parable one time. He called a meeting, and somebody came up in there wasn't dressed right. He said, "How the heck you get up in here?" I'm just paraphrasing. He said, "How'd you get up in here?" They said, "Carry this. Get him out of here." It make your appearance makes a difference. Yes, it does. Yes. Suppose you went and got a lawyer. You on trial for something. You you got a lawyer, and a lawyer show up wearing look like he just been up underneath a car, got grease all on his fingernail, d dirt all on his kneecap. Come on, somebody, right. smelling stanky and everything. Is you a lawyer or are you a mechanic? All right, now. Come on. That's right, Pastor. Amen. They don't like me preaching this here. But they come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they're raving in wolves. I missed my first point, y'all, and, and I apologize. 
um, for verse verse 13 and 14 is very important. I need to back. Can I back up and, and deal with this? You still got your Bibles? Uh, see, we can't judge spiritual profession on statistics. The majority of folks ain't always right. We saw that with Joshua and Caleb in the mother 10. I've been on that, huh? I'm going to deal with Joshua this, this Tuesday. The fact that everybody does it, that's not any proof that they're doing it right. You see, the new style is, you know, homosex. That's homosex. That's the new style. Love the one you're with. You hear what I'm saying? That, and, they, and they're pushing it on our children. Your children being groomed. Y'all don't believe this. Some years ago, I changed our bylaws. I, 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 we, we don't have to do stuff like that. Somebody come up in here switching in the kitchen and all that kind of stuff. Our bylaws say that. And see, the law can only judge us according to our bylaws. Just because everybody does ain't no proof that what they're doing is right. God's people have always been a remnant. A small minority in this world. See, Jesus said the way of life is narrow. He said it's lonely. And he's saying it is costly. Come on, somebody. He says we, we can walk on the broad way and we can keep our baggage but if we enter the narrow way we got to get that stuff up yes, sir. Amen. You, you ever you know when you go fly you, now, you can check your bag and you, they let you carry a certain bag but I get to tell you one thing you can walk from the from the security point and from the first bag check in all the way through where they look at you go, take your shoes off belt off and all that stuff but when it get time to get on that plane they take that other bag you got, and there's a little box right there. Let's see if it fit in there. Y'all don't like me preaching this here. In other words, you can sit up there and fake the funk all you want to right now. But when it get time for glory, there's going to be a final inspection. you got to understand God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's going to be a final inspection. Come on, somebody. Which going to determine whether you're going to enter into that gate. Come on, that pearly gate. Or you're going to get on the down escalator. Hallelujah. So here's the first test to see whether you're getting this thing right. Did your profession of faith in Christ cost you anything? It should have cost you so. Oh, but Jesus paid it all. Don't try to play tech on me. Even though Jesus paid it all, he expects you to give up some stuff to walk with him. If any man will come after me, he must first deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. That's Jesus. All, all y'all fault that. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. This ain't no popularity contest. This ain't judging a, a good church by how it look on the outside. This ain't judging a big a church because it's got big and it's got programs and it's got a golfing ministry. It's got a bowling ministry. It's got a knitting ministry. Jimmy! All right, come on. They don't like me preaching like this. Uh, Did your profession of faith in yes. Christ cost you anything? Yes. 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 Elder Patterson, if it did not cost you anything, it ain't a true profession. Father, help me preach this. Can I take my time? It's important. I can't be rushed on this, y'all. See, there's many people who profess a trust in Jesus Christ. They have never left the broad road that with its appetites and all of its associations. These folks are walking 
with an easy Christianity that makes no demands on them. Y'all don't like me preaching like this? Oh, pastor. No, well, I'm going to tell you what's going on. When you, now when you pray, you ain't going to be, oh, God, you know I need. No, you're going to say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me for sitting there, Lord God, watching that movie that was that was good, but had all them all that cussing in it. And I subjected my spirit to all them sex scenes and all them suggestive suggestive things. But it had a good plot. Yeah, the plot was to put that mess on you. Jesus said that the narrow way was hard. Now, let's, can we get this thing right? See, we got it twisted. We think something wrong when we go through stuff. But the Bible says those who are going to live godly are going to suffer persecution. But then Jesus said we bless if we persecute it. He said for so persecuted the prophets that were before you. So if you're living a life, a poor big Christian, and you don't want, I don't want, I want everybody to love me. Then you ain't, don't, then you, what you're going to do, you're going to, you're a sellout. Am I right about it? Amen. Hallelujah. Beware of false prophets. Where was that? You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? So the first test is, is did my profession of faith in Christ cost me something? Mm -hmm. My second test is this here. Did, it, did, 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 it, did my life change? My life change. Yeah. It used to be we knew that when we got saved, we had to give up beer. Mm -hmm. Y'all right. don't like me preaching like this Go here. Ahead, we knew when we got saved, all of our cool mouths, uh, come on all of our Newports, all of our Salem's, uh -huh. our Moors, uh -huh. them long brown ones, uh -huh. some of y'all Virginia slim smoking pokes, uh -huh. <laughs> Benson and Hedges Coos, uh -huh. Salem's, uh -huh. Marlboro's, uh -huh. Red Green. Yeah. Yeah. We knew we had to get that stuff up. Yeah. We knew it. Yeah. We knew we couldn't keep smoking crack. We knew we had to give up marijuana. Yeah, yeah, right. Now they, they don't want to call it marijuana. Cannabis. <laughs> CBD. It's marijuana to thee. <laughs> they trying to whitewash stuff. We knew. But Jesus, he turned water into wine. <laughs> and, P, and Paul told, P, to, told Timothy to drink a little wine for your stomach. <laughs> he sure did, but he ain't say nothing about your head. some stuff on our life. We knew we couldn't keep on cussing. We knew who we were shacked up with. We had to cut that. Yeah. We knew it. It was a, it was a non-negotiable. We knew it. Y'all don't like me teaching like this here. Maybe I lost two people from the church. Father, send me two more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Hallelujah. See, this is challenging my life. Yeah. See, if you're not careful, that's why the Bible we read before, let every man think he standeth, take heed lest he fall. Yeah. It's causing me to examine my life. Because we can get off into, get into this gospel, this gospel of grace, this gospel of blessing, this gospel of our inheritance, this gospel of nothing missing, nothing broken. We can start preaching that gospel. It is, in fact, the good news. But at the same time, we got to live some stuff. Don't get mad at me. You came to this church today. God told you to come here. I'm not done. Did my decision for Christ change my life? 
See, false prophets, they teach a false doctrine that can produce only a false righteousness. It's a false sense of security. The prophets themselves are false. And the closer we get to them, the more we see the falsity of their lives and their doctrines. They tend to magnify themselves and not Jesus Christ. These false prophets' purposes are to exploit you. And not to build you up, not to edify you, not to bless you. They know how to talk in a manner which makes you feel at ease. Their teeth are in a better shape than mine. I can't smile like I want to, but they smile. And they make you feel good. Oh. Oh. I was preaching one time at a mission down in San Diego when I just got saved. And I, the Lord told me to go preach. And I went down there and preach, was preaching at that mission. I was in the middle aisle. And I was preaching and testifying about how God delivered me. And a guy was on the row, like on the edge. He bent over, reached in his sock, pulled out his crack pipe and his lighter and gave it to me. Yep. Conviction. Yes. Power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Y'all yes. 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 ain't hearing me. I was in, I was in Corona one time couldn't find a church to preach in I said God I want to preach I need to preach somewhere Bishop Dixon was way down and saying I need to preach showed me this little storefront church on 6th street I said I'm going to go in there and ask him can I come in here and preach I went and knocked on the door and they said hey I, said, I introduced myself I said I'm a minister I've been living up here for about a year and a half and I'm just looking is it possible for me to, to enter? he said you want to preach I said yeah he said come here tomorrow so I went there the next day. It was a Saturday. I went there, had my little Bible under my arm and everything. I'm coming up in to preach. The man told me, he said, go around the corner. I went around the corner. He had me up in an alleyway. Did y'all ain't hear me? I said, what's this here? He said, preach. I went, hey! I went in that alleyway and I preached. I preached in that alleyway. At the end of my message, I turned to leave. He said, no, come with me. So I go inside the church. He took me into his office. I said, what's going on? He said, pray for me. I said, why? He says, I'm in adultery. He said, I'm messing around with somebody else's wife, and I know better than, because y'all ain't hearing me. I'm talking about when you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ without fear and no favor. It ain't, come on, somebody. Would God raise up some John the Baptist people? Would God raise up some folk, glory to God, that's got the fire of God in their mouth, glory to God, that will preach this gospel under an anointing to change people's lives, to challenge people's lives, to show people the right way to go? I'm not done yet. Every tree Every good tree brings forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree can't bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. Now we see fire again. This fire thing keeps popping up. Wherefore by their fruit you should know them. So did your profession of faith cost you anything? Did your decision for Christ change your life? Elder Patterson used to be an alcoholic. His decision for Christ changed his life. It changed his life. I remember the first time we went to visit him when he was in the transition house. We went, me and him, he said, he said take me to the, to, the, to the supermarket. I got to pick up some personal items. And we went inside the supermarket. He wasn't done with his, the time in the transition house. He transitioned from, you know. And we went in the, in the store. And right in the entrance of the store, they had all these, these liquor store <laughs> bottles. Elder Pat, that's him. Stand up. Stand up. Let me. Okay, sit back down. That brother got in the store and said, oh, no. I said, what's going on with you? The liquor. He said, I'm going this way. He turned and went a whole nother way. He said, that liquor was talking to him. Come on, somebody. I said, come on, somebody. Now I know, I believe he can go inside the liquor store and the liquor store, the stuff ain't talking to him. Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. Did it change your life? 
if you still doing the same mess you was doing on the time when you received Jesus, you need to check yourself. You need to check in with Jesus. You need to come to Jesus and say, Lord, forgive me. Help me. I need to be delivered. I'm still dragging around the same mess I was dragging around from day one. It should change your life. Let's skip down to verse 21. Anybody getting something? Not, now I ain't talking about getting mad at me. I'm talking about getting something. Not everyone that saith unto me, here we go, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Is this making sense? But he that what? Hey, hold on. Put your finger on do it. This ain't got nothing to do with what you know. It's talking about what you do. I'll say it again. It's got nothing to do with what you know. It's all about what you do. He that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day. Here we go. Y'all ready to go there? Hallelujah. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? He's talking to God like that. Yeah. And in thy name have we cast out. I cast out devils in your name. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Look what Jesus said. And then, listen. No, no look at your pages and listen at the same time. And then will I profess unto them I what never knew you what else did he say depart from me ye that work iniquity wait a minute catch the vision these folk been down here acting acting See, it ain't what this is. It's what this is. It's this heart. And look what happened. Oh, he had such a great following. Yeah, but the problem was he kept he couldn't keep his hands off them little boys. So your Maybach ain't going to get you in the glory. Your airplanes ain't going to get you in the glory. Your helicopters, your 20,000 square foot mansion by the lake that you done told the folk that God said for them to give you money to buy it. Catch the picture. They've done all of this stuff. Now they're in front of God. We call that the beam of judgment seat. And what does he tell them? Get up out of here. Get up out of here. Catch this. These folk lived a life that y'all would consider to be saved. But God's word says, he said, I said, get up out of here. I don't know you. You work iniquity. Your motivation was wrong. You did. You preached to get. That's why Paul said, let us lie, lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run this race that's before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. Come on, and is now sat down at the right hand. Y'all ain't hearing me up in this place. So in my closing, get right or get left. Get right or get left. Get right. Or get left. Get right. Or get left. Don't whitewash the gospel. Don't whitewash. Don't excuse me. Don't whitewash sin. A lot of preachers got a problem 
with preaching like this here. Well, you know, you're not supposed to do people like, I ain't did none to them. They're doing it to themselves. Well, Jesus never hurt anyone's feelings. Wait, hold on a second. The one thing I, I pride myself in, I can read. And I don't just read, I read with comprehension. They told me when I was in fifth grade, that I read on a college a reading level. Mama, didn't, Mama, Mama Langston didn't raise up no fool. I can read. Mm -hmm. Jesus told a whole bunch of folk who thought they was, they, well, they, well, they were Pharisees. And they thought they knew the word of God better than him. And then they show you how Jesus preached. Jesus said, you generation of vipers. You gen listen. No, 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 no. I mean, see, I know, but it's hard to imagine Jesus saying that. That's because you're looking at that picture of Jesus with that long hair. It'd be hard for me looking at something looking like that, seeing something like that in the front myself. They look at who that? That's Jesus. Look like he's saying peace out. That ain't Jesus. That ain't Jesus. That ain't Jesus. That that's a man made up whitewashed version of Jesus. That ain't Jesus. Jesus said, "You generation of viper." Jesus, listen. These folk was inside the church and tied the temple making money. Jesus went up there and mixed their money up, messed their money, kicked everything over, get that, start whipping them, get that heck up out. I got news for y'all. Jesus was bad. Jesus was tough. Jesus was tough. You want to know how tough he was? He fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights. And the Bible says after he was real hungry, the devil came to tempt him, but it didn't work. That's a bad dude. That's a bad dude. That's a bad dude. Some of y'all go to Stater Brothers and the woman just switching. You got the. That's right. Who then broke your neck? You get to speaking in tongues so you don't look. Some of y'all women just like that too. Michael Jordan show up on TV and you can't hear <laughs> All of a sudden you're into sports. Don't whitewash sin. Come clean. Let's get this thing together. Jesus is soon to come. You see all the stuff that's happening with all this. We keep reading about fire, 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 fire. And it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hot. And then we read that the Bible says that this earth going to be consumed with fervent heat. We don't come on somebody. It look like we're going to have some spontaneous combustion. That this thing going to blow up on its own self. Y'all got to help me preach up in here. It's time to get this thing right. Glory to Jesus name. I say glory to Jesus name. Something wrong during the plea when the nations that we sent missionaries to. Glory to God and told them about Jesus. They live for Jesus more than we do. Come on somebody. We got this thing twisted we trying to change history we trying to change time we trying to but god forgives i ain't said he didn't did you hear me say god don't forgive but i'm here to tell you god said you got to live right you got to live holy he said follow holiness for without so man no man see the lord you got to live right folks murmured can i get done is this making sense to somebody? Is it helping anybody? So what am I, what's my argument? What's the end of this argument? That once, you know, once you're saved, then you're saved. Once you're saved, you might be saved, but if you're safe. Is you safe? Is you safe? You know, home base ain't first base. Home base ain't second base. You don't, get no, you don't get no points for being on third. Right. You get points for making it home. Yes, 
We're trying to get the glory. I said, we're trying to get the glory. We're trying to get the glory. I said, we're trying to get the glory. God can give you a debt free house. That don't mean you're going into heaven. God can give you a debt free car. That don't mean you're going into heaven. Come on. God can heal you with this. He can heal you with that. He can deliver you with this. But that don't mean you're going to heaven. You got to live something for Jesus. You got to make Jesus your choice. You got to make him your Lord and your Savior. You got to make him the boss. Now somebody stand to their feet and let's worship him. Let's praise him up in this place. Come on, somebody. Let's praise him up in this place. Somebody say, yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul, my soul says, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I surrender. I surrender all. I surrender, Lord Jesus. I surrender, Lord Jesus. I surrender. Come on, help me, somebody. I surrender every bad habit. I surrender. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me pray. I'll pray for myself. I know I got some stuff I got to work on. Give me a wide shot, sweetie. Help me, Jesus. Help Pastor Sessom. Help Pastor Sessom. Help Pastor Sessom. Pastor Sessom want to go to glory. We used to sing a song. Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his faith. And to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice. Help me, mother. Have, what? How's what's the rest of the song? What? Cares have passed. Home at last. Heaven to. Re oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory. Help me lift my voice. Cares off past home and land, heaven to rejoice. One more time. Oh, I want to see. I want to see you upon you. That's what I want to do. There to sing of thin grace on of glory. Let me lift my voice. Cares all past home and lands heaven to rejoice. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We praise you. We praise you. We praise you, Jesus. Perhaps you're in this place and you heard the word of God. And the word of God convicted your heart. The Lord of the word of God spoke to your heart. Hallelujah. It spoke to your heart. And you're saying, yes, Lord. I need help. I need prayer. I want to change. I want to get in. I, I, I want to do more than know about Jesus. I want to do what Jesus says. I need help. I need prayer. If that's you in this room, hallelujah. Listen, this is a serious message. That was a serious message. That was a, that was a challenging message. Hallelujah. 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 I said, hallelujah. Perhaps it's you saying, Lord, I need prayer. I want you to come to the altar. 
Can somebody put some kind of music on? Some find it, Renee. Show it the, the, the one that's just music. Show them how to do it. Hallelujah. If you don't know how to do it, tell me you don't know how to do it, and then I'll do it. I'll just leave Reggie here to pray, to pray, and I'll go back there and do it, and I'll come back up here. We we can do this. There's one. God bless you. 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 Is there another? God bless you. 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 Is there another? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Is there another? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'll I'll come and do it. I'll come and do it if y'all can't do it. I'll come and do it. Hold this and just say God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you, Father God. Glory to God. We thank you for this opportunity right now, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory to God, Father God. We thank you for your mercy this morning, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for your compassion today, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to God, Father. We thank you this morning, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. For your unfailing love, Father God. Hallelujah, Father God. Hallelujah for this here opportunity to repent this morning, Father. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, we thank you. Glory to God for keeping us on the straight and narrow, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father God. Glory to God. Not letting us go way out, Father God. Glory to God. But leading us on that path of righteousness, Lord. Glory to God glory to God we thank you Jesus thank you Jesus anybody else come on the, the altar is open for you listen repenting is a good thing it's not what the devil tell you the devil saying want you to feel embarrassed the devil want you to feel exposed this ain't got nothing to do with that this is about glory to God coming to God saying I'm changing my mind I'm not come on somebody I'm not I recognize I'm not where I need to be in my Christian walk and I desire change I desire to get a closer closer to the ideal that G uh, come on somebody that God would have me to walk in that's what we're praying today I'm going to get some prayer too. So don't, don't, don't listen. Pastor Sesame, don't get him some prayer. I'm going to stand up here with you. Is there anybody else? Come on, we're going to just, the altar is available for you. Let's make up, somebody else might want to come. You move out the way. Somebody else wants to come. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel this thing in this room. Turn the music up some. He said, Move them down. Somebody else wants to come. Somebody else wants to come. Somebody else wants to come. The Holy Spirit is moving in this place. That's why says an artist pray in the spirit. He Somebody else wants to come. The altar is open for you. This is your opportunity. This is our opportunity to get our stuff adjusted with God. Move on down. Take the altar. Come on, somebody. Move down. Let him in. Let him in. Let him in. Let him in. He shake home the labo shake out my bata. Hey, no labo shanda. Minister Sam, I need you up here to help me pray. He shake on first lady. I need you to help me pray. He shake on the bo shanda babaha. Yes, 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 Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul, my soul says yes, yes to your will, yes to your way, yes. Say yes, Lord. Everybody, yes, Lord. I surrender. I surrender everything to thee, my Savior. I surrender all, everything. We surrender. 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 We surrender, Lord. We surrender, Lord. Your way, your will, 
your word. We surrender. We surrender. We surrender, Lord. Have your way with us, Lord. We surrender. We surrender. We surrender. Have your way, Jesus. We surrender. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. We surrender. I surrender my all to thee. 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 I surrender. I surrender. My all to thee. My all to thee. My all to thee. My all to thee. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. My all to thee. 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 I surrender. I surrender. My all to thee. My all, Lord. We surrender. We surrender. Your word is the truth. Your word is the truth. Your word is the truth. We surrender. 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 We surrender, Lord. We surrender. 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 I surrender. I surrender, Lord. I surrender, Jesus. God, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender, Jesus. Your way is right. Your way is right. Your word is right. You love me. You care for me. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender, Jesus. Yes, I know Boko. Every bad habit, we surrender. Every relationship, we surrender. Every motive, we surrender. Yes, Lord. Jealousy, we surrender. Gossiping, we surrender. Idolatry, we surrender. We surrender. Lying, we surrender. Fornication, we surrender. We surrender. We surrender. We surrender. We surrender. You watching us by YouTube and by Facebook, right where you are, I surrender. Whether you're in the kitchen, surrender. The front room, the dining room, surrender right where you are. If you're driving down the road, say, I surrender, Lord. I surrender, Jesus. I surrender, Jesus. Perhaps you want to be among us in this atmosphere. But right where you are, you can create that atmosphere. I surrender, Jesus. I surrender. I surrender. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for victory. 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 Come on, somebody, claim your victory. Thank you for victory. Thank you for victory. Come on. Thank you for victory. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Somebody say this after me. Say, Lord, what you say is sin is sin. I will not cover it up anymore. But I will confess it, forsake it, and live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name.
Now somebody now put your hand together and give God some praise in this place. for a, she's in the hospital last yes. last yes. week. She wanted every. In the name of Jesus, Amen. She wants. Um, uh, she wants to thank everybody, and especially Jesus Christ, for um, everybody's prayers and today's um, lovely afternoon. Pretty Amen. much. She was hospitalized for three days. It was a really nice hospital. They take they took very good care of her. Uh, we we were uh, gracious in everybody's eyes there. Everybody came and told her how how lovely she was and really Amen. liked her. They were very delicate with her and treated her very right. And only the last day, when she was registering to be with, there with her, she, w she was only allowed to see her for 15 minutes because she was very in a very serious condition. And she was like shaking herself off and just wondering what happened, what went wrong. Because just the other day, she was fine. <laughs> she, went with her, um, she went to where she was, my, uh, my grandma. And she asked her, what's wrong? Like, what's going on? Why are you feeling bad? What's going on? And she just said that she was fine, that she was, really, she was doing good. And the nurse let everybody know that she was leaving today, that same day. She doesn't know why, but that day they told her the complete opposite. Like, she's very seriously ill, and then not too long after that, they let her go, and she was fine. Amen. So, they, sent her, they sent her home with oxygen. She only had it for one week. 
the she was evaluated by a doctor, and she um, he deemed that he she did not need it anymore. Amen. And she's very grateful to everybody. She uh, gives everybody a hug for um, praying for her. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. That's awesome. Amen. 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 God is so good to us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. At this time, we're going to have everyone stand. Praise the Lord. And we'll just go ahead and pray on out. Amen. Amen. Uh, we have one announcement. Okay. All right. All right. We'll do that right now. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you, Father God. We thank you for the word that went forth, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for repentance, Lord. Oh, we thank you for repentance, Father God. Father God, we believe, Lord, even as we confessed it, Lord, that we stand here clean right now forgiven of all our sins father god in the name of jesus lord lord we will hang on to this word without wavering father god oh glory to god we thank you that as we depart from this place lord that you are with us wherever we go father god we say that you are refuge our fortress it is in you that we put our trust father god we thank you father god that all those who attended today, all those who heard on Facebook, we believe that they are delivered, healed, and set free. And we give you the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to have you repeat after me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord. My strength and my redeemer. And the church says, God bless you. Amen. Have a wonderful one. Praise God.